working from our understanding that k, an equilibrium constant, is always represented by the concentration or molarity of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients over the concentration or molarity of the reactants raised to their coefficients, we can get a few special k values that tell us about the qualities of an acid, base, or a substance that is being dissolved. And so we have kW, ka, kb, and ksp, which is the solubility product. All of these are just following the basic rule of how to come up with an equilibrium constant, but they all tell us certain things. So we'll start off with water, and what happens with liquid water is that every now and then it will dissociate into H plus and OH minus. You may also see this H plus as an H3O plus. That's another way it could be depicted. And that's the actual form that the, uh, that the ion is in. It's usually an H3O plus in the aqueous solution. You're unlikely to find an actual H plus by itself, but we can depict it this way. But ultimately, because this is liquid water, we don't use pure liquids in our equilibrium expressions. And so the KW is basically the equilibrium of this reaction, and it involves the molarity of the hydronium ions or the protons times the molarity of the hydroxide ions, the OH minus. And because the stoichiometry for both of these is one, we don't raise these to, well, we raise them to the first power, but you don't depict that usually. And KW always equals 10 to the negative 14. That is a empirically established value and it will always be 10 to the negative 14. So if you have a lot of protons, for example, you'll have a lot fewer hydroxide ions. But KW is simply the equilibrium expression for water when it dissociates into its two ionic forms. With an acid, we have a, a simple generic acid equation here with HA, an aqueous acid which has a proton attached, and to that, we, we put it in water, and uh, that dissociates into protons or hydronium ions, and the conjugate base, which we represent as A minus. Again, because we don't use pure liquids in our equilibrium expressions, the Ka value, which is the acid dissociation constant, will be the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of A minus, both of those raised to the first power, divided by the concentration of the acid in its original form. And that's the Ka value. Notice that a good acid is one that dissociates frequently into protons and its conjugate base. And so if this is a very good acid, it will have a high Ka because these two values will be high relative to this value. If it's a weaker acid, then it will have a much lower Ka value. So a high Ka represents a very strong acid. And later on when we get to pKa, we'll find that a low pKa is also a strong acid, but that'll be in a separate part of this video. Now for bases, it's very similar. A base, you have some negatively charged species, or it could be a neutrally charged species that's just very good at picking up protons. But when you put a base into water, what happens is the A group now picks up a proton here and becomes the conjugate acid of that base. And you end up with the hydroxide OH minus ion. And so to find our Kb value, we just take these two quantities, put them on the top, raise them to the first power, and we have the aqueous species on the bottom here. But remember, we don't include pure liquids, just like we don't include solids in our equilibrium expressions. Once again, a good base is something that will pick up a lot of protons and oftentimes in an aqueous environment will produce a lot of OH minus. And so something that's very good at being a base will have high numbers on the top here and lower numbers on the bottom. And so it will have a high Kb. And this is something you'll encounter a lot. A strong acid has a high Ka and a low pKa. A strong base has a high Kb and a low pKb. So just be aware that you want a high K value if it's a strong member of that species, but you will want a low pK value, and we'll get to that in a moment. 
The last thing is for solubility. There are two ways of representing solubility that we'll discuss elsewhere in this course. But there's molar solubility and there's solubility product. Solubility product, or KSP, is an equilibrium expression of some solid solute being put into water and dissolving into its pieces. And so here we have Na2CO3 and that exists in solid form and when that gets put in water it dissociates into two sodium ions and one CO3 ion. And the way that you do the KSP value is very, very similar to all the others. It's an equilibrium expression and that means you don't include pure liquids like water or pure solids like this salt that we have here. And so what you're left with is the product which is Na+, but remember that because the stoichiometry here is two, we're gonna have the molarity of Na+, raised to the second power. And then we'll have the CO3 group over here raised to the first power. But KSP is just like all of these other ones. It's simply an equilibrium expression, but it tells us about this particular species. Similarly to the other ones here, something with a high KSP value is something that is very, very soluble. It's very good at breaking away from its solid form and instead turning in to its ionic pieces that are then dissolved. And so a higher KSP means that this is a more soluble product within, within the water or the aqueous medium that it's in. And so with K values, the general rule is K water is just K water and it's just a number that you'll know. The other ones, a high K value generally means that it's very, very good at being that kind of species. It's a good acid, it's a good base, or it's something that is very good at dissolving. Okay, so we've gone ahead and erased the KSP value and this will enable us to use a negative logarithm in order to find certain p-values, pH, pKa, etc. And all that these are is simply the negative logarithm of that particular species. So Kw, if you have Kw, the pKw is simply the negative log of Kw. And that is always going to be 14 because the logarithm of Kw is going to be negative 14. And so the negative log of that will be 14. And that's an important value to know. To find your pKa, what you do is simply take the negative log of your Ka, and to find the pKb, take the negative log of your Kb. And whereas with a strong acid you want a high Ka, with a strong base you want a high Kb, what you actually want for your pKa and pKb is a smaller value, and that's because the larger Ka is, the smaller pKa will be. And so the general rule is that a low P whatever means that it's a strong whatever. It's a strong member of that species. So if it has a low pH, that means it's strongly acidic because it's good at producing H+. If it has a low pKa, that means that it's a good acid. If it has a low pKb, that means it's a strong base. Low pOH means that it's good at producing hydroxide ions. So again, that makes it a strong base. And the general rule is if you have a high K value or a low PK value, both of those mean that it's a strong member of that species. A few other things to be aware of. Realize that the pH and pOH are simply the negative logarithms of the molarity of protons or hydronium ions. And the pOH is the negative log of OH minus the hydroxide ions. But once again, a low value for pH means strongly acidic a low value for pOH means strongly basic in that environment. The other things to realize are that when you add pH and pOH to each other, that will always equal 14, which you could also say is the pKw. But ultimately, if you have a solution where you know that the pH is four, for example, you will know that the pOH for that has to be 10. And that's an important piece to understand there. And it's just based on a mathematical proof of this K water formula. And then the other thing is that a pKa, when you take the pKa of an acid and add the pKb of its conjugate base, that will also equal 14. So if you have an acid that is a fairly strong acid, it has a pKa of one, for example, 
its conjugate base is going to have a pKb of 13. And that's why you always see a strong acid having a weak conjugate base. And a weaker acid has a weak to moderate conjugate base. And a strong base will have a weak conjugate acid. It's because if one of these numbers is very low, and that means that it's very strong, the conjugate will have to have a higher number, and so it won't be as effective as part of that species. And it kind of makes sense, because remember, a strong acid is something that is very good at donating its protons, according to some definitions. And so if it's really good at donating protons, its conjugate base will not be very good at picking up these protons and going in the opposite direction. We already intuitively kind of know that. Here now we have a mathematical proof. pKa plus the pKb of its conjugate base will always equal 14. And that's why you see a strong acid having a weak conjugate base or a strong base having a weak conjugate acid. But also just realize that a low P whatever means that it's strong in that particular respect. If it's a low pKa, it's a strong acid. Low pKb, strong base. And remember that to get from any of these numbers to the p values, all that you do is simply take the negative logarithm of that quantity or of that molarity. And that is the formula that you use for all of these.